seems to me that the religious world Balaj doesn't want to uh, acknowledge that changes have taken place in the dealings with God of God with mankind since the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven called and commissioned Solo Tarsus that we know to be Paul and made of him the apostle and the preacher and teacher of the Gentiles. We know that Christ in his earthly ministry recorded in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, he had 12 apostles that he himself called and chose to be such and gave them power over evil spirits, devils, to cast them out, to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead, and the message they had to preach to Israel, first of all, to the twelve tribes, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, was repent and be baptized. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, the kingdom of heaven is nothing new. It was promised by the Lord, by the Father, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and later King David and the kings and King David. There was a day, it was going to be a day in which his Messiah, the Son of God, will come to Israel and establish <clears throat> the kingdom on earth, the kingdom of God on earth. So that's why Christ chose this to help. And he commanded them to go and preach this gospel to the Jews only because the rest of the world, the Gentiles, had no covenants with God. Simple as that. So you can read in the Gospels when Christ calls the twelve and commissions them. And even at the end of the Gospels, after his passion, he gives them commandments concerning what people in general call the Great Commission. Go all over to the world to preach the gospel of the kingdom. People need to repent, be baptized in water, and, you know, receive the kingdom and the king. But things change, you know. And in a very significant way, because... <clears throat> You can go and read in the book of Acts after the descent of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost on the 12th <clears throat> and the power and the signs and the miracles performed by Peter and those who were ministering with him. There was a moment of revival like that, you know, 3,000 people, 5,000 people and they were holding the temple you know, praising God and <clears throat> serving God according to the law. But things changed because God gave <clears throat> another year of uh, mercy to Israel because he wanted the whole nation, not just the twelve or a certain group, not only the, the, the flock and the rest. <laughs> he wanted all Israel to believe and receive the Messiah and to believe and receive the kingdom so they could be born again and see the kingdom, enter in the kingdom where King Jesus will reign with the twelve from Jerusalem over all the nations, the Gentile nations, so the, the, the rest of the Gentiles will come to the God of Israel through this glorious preaching. Preaching that was accompanied by signs and wonders and miracles. He gave this time, this year of mercy, just like the story of uh, the parable of the, uh, of the tree. And uh, it didn't work. Israel still rejected the King Jesus 
and the kingdom, except the new, a few disciples. Even if uh, thousands, a few thousands, the rest of the nation didn't. Did the, the Lord fail? Did this plan fail? God forbid. God knew exactly what was going to happen. Still, being the righteous God he is and faithful to his word and fulfill his word, he gave them the opportunity. But unfortunately, they blasphemed the Holy Ghost. In Acts 7, they stoned Stephen, who was full of the Holy Ghost, and gave them the sad, sad history of their betrayal, disobedience, backsliding, and rebellion to the God of Israel, notwithstanding his goodness and mercy and kindness and the great and mighty operations and the deliverance from Egypt and so forth. By stoning Stephen, they blasphemed the Holy Ghost because Stephen says it was full of the Holy Ghost, his face was shining like the face of an angel. But those people, they didn't care. They didn't want Jesus to be the king. <clears throat> and Paul, Saul of Tarsus actually, was there holding the clothes for those who were stoning Stephen. And the situation was really terrible. It seems radically that all the wonderful things that God wanted to do with his earthly nation Israel couldn't come to fruition because of the unbelief and the rebellion and the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. Now, that blasphemy against the Holy Ghost, a type of sin that cannot be committed now, at that time was under, under covenants, under the law, could not be forgiven, not in this life and in the life to come. Jesus said that. And they, <clears throat> the nation, did commit this blasphemy. But then, in Acts 9, a great change takes place because why Paul, okay, let's, let him still call Paul, so leading, uh, you know, this uh, persecution group was going towards Damascus to receive letters of, from the Pharisees to arrest and persecute to the very end men and women. Paul said yeah, later, you know, I was a blasphemer uh, and I was an injurious persecutor, you know, I did the ignorance and unbelief. It seems practically that everything is uh, in a terrible situation, but God, but God, he had this eternal purpose, which we know to be the mystery, to create a new creature, which we know now to be the body of Christ, where it doesn't matter if you are a Gentile or a Jew, by believing the gospel of the grace of God, you will be saved and sealed and belong to this new reality. So practically, <clears throat> I would say that the plan with Israel has been postponed into the future. So now we have a new apostle, which is quite extraordinary. Extraordinary because Jesus had 12 apostles. Peter and 11. Because Judas took his own life, they beat the betrayer. And when they prayed, the Lord made clear that Matthias was the twelfth. And now you have a new apostle made such directly from the Lord from heaven. And that you can read in Acts 9. Not only that, in Acts 9, verse 15, Christ said to Ananias, who was a kingdom gospel believer, was afraid to meet with Paul. Go that way, for is a chosen vessel unto me to, make, to bear my name to Gentiles 
between kings and children of Israel. So finally, praise God, us Gentiles, the uncircumcised Gentiles, the, uh, the Gentile dogs, according to, to Israel, you know. We were at that time strangers and aliens from the common from the covenants of the common of Israel. We were without Christ, without God, without hope in the world. But now God has a special minister and ministry outside of Israel to all people, men and women, Gentiles. And also kings and children of Israel, the children of Israel were to reject the gospel of the kingdom to be saved and be, become part of this new creature by believing and receiving the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of the cross. It seems, I repeat, that this is largely ignored for whatever reason that, you know, not up to me to say why, seems to me normally as a question of control, power, religion, money. It was the gospel of the grace of God and the preaching of it does not require uh, obligatory collection of money with tithes and offering. If anybody wants to give anything, it's out of the generosity to help those who preach, but there is no obligation. We are saved by grace through faith without works whatsoever on our part. So, what I'm interested in this grace in Acts 20 24, Paul wrote, But none of these things move the persecution, the dangers that were waiting for him in Jerusalem, neither count of my life dear unto myself, so I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I receive of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So that's the first time that you find this expression, the gospel of the grace of God. It's the only time for the gospel of the grace of God. In Acts 20, 32, it says, Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Now we, we jump in Romans, Romans 1, 1 5. Paul is saying that by whom we receive grace and apostleship. Grace has been always present. I found 159 times 170 match, matches in the King James Bible, but you will find out that in the Old Testament, in the prophetic, people found grace. You know what I mean? It's not this grace in the in sense that this grace is the favor of God. Now here we're talking about the gospel of the grace of God. Noah found the first time, you know, but not found grace, found grace in the seven years of the Lord. Behold now thy serpent has found grace, and I have oxen my find grace. To find grace. You see find grace? Found the found grace. Fine grace. Fine grace. So this is after prayers, you know, the finding grace, or God gives grace because it's necessary to whatever he wants to do. But here with the Apostle Paul, you receive grace. He received grace. By whom we receive grace and apostleship. The gospel of grace is received. The gospel of the cross is received. That's how you get saved, by believing God and receiving the operation of God. 
receiving the grace of God. Paul says, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. So this goes outside the border of Jerusalem and Samaria, Israel. And that's why Romans 1.7 said to all that be in Rome, all of a sudden Rome, the capital of the Roman Empire, Gentile for excellence, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, I know this very interesting that Paul, by his own description, declaration, he was a Roman citizen by birth. He was born in Tarsus, Cilicia. So automatically, by birth, he was a Roman citizen. And he was a Pharisee of Pharisee, Hebrew, Hebrews of the tribe of Benjamin. He seems to be the perfect figure of a, a body, in this case a man, in which the Jew and the Gentile coexist. Because that's exactly what happened. When you believe this glorious gospel of grace, it doesn't matter who you are. You are no more Jew or Gentile. You are no more... You know, I'm Italian, I'm Australian, I'm Serbian, I'm American. You are now a member in particular of the body of Christ, the new creature. And also the destination of this body of believers is no more the new Jerusalem, the kingdom on earth, but heavenly places in Christ. In Romans 3, 24 it says, being justified, please notice this, freely, by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So this gospel of grace does not require any type of contribution work on our part, including, of course, water baptisms, confessing sins, uh, practicing the religion, going every Sunday to service and paying tithes and offerings. Nothing. You are not in Israel in any way, shape or form. When Jesus in Matthew 15, 24 said, I've been sent but only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, it's not a phrase thrown, you know, just... Because that's exactly his ministry. His earthly ministry was to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, exclusively. Now, some Gentiles, who were anyway proselytes, who were blessing Israel, they received blessing in, in during that period, only because under the, the, the description of the covenant, Abraham covenant, those who bless thee, I will bless, and those who curse, I will curse which is not active now. So now, for you American citizen, or Australian, or Italian, whoever you are, sending money to this nation down there in the Middle East to buy guns and missiles and rockets to continue this tremendous killing, you're not going to be blessed by God. You, if you think that God is in that, I'm sorry. You have a very, 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 very distorted image of the Lord and of His doings. And you really don't know that there's been a change. That we are now in the dispensation of the grace of God since Acts 9. And it's been lasting 2,000 years. And how long is going to last? I don't know. If it's another day, month, year, decade, 100 years, 1,000 years, I don't know. The end is going to come of this dispensation of the grace of God. The very moment the Lord Jesus Christ now lives again in the region of heaven, heavenly places, and meets the body of Christ in the air, because that's the catching up of the body of Christ. Another doctrine very much mistreated by religion, because they confuse the second coming of Christ to Israel with the catching up the body of Christ 
and they don't realize that the catching up or the rapture, okay, is part of the revelation of the mystery. As Paul says in Romans 15, 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So the body of Christ, while we minister grace, with the ministry of reconciliation, with the word of reconciliation, and we preach the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of the cross, the only gospel that saves you now, the body of Christ is not yet forever. It's going to come a moment in which the Lord is going to call us home. So, see if you are serving the Lord accordingly, according to the Ministry of Reconciliation, or you still stuck with the dispensation of the Kingdom that not only is not in operation, but creates serious problems for you, if you have believed the Gospel of the Cross, but still participate to the Kingdom Gospel saga. That's not the case, you know. You have to leave that because God has set it aside. I heard people say that God failed with Israel, so that was plan A and now there is plan B. No, 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 no. God cannot fail. <laughs> God is perfect. And if you don't know the Lord because you don't read the word and you don't understand that God cannot lie, let God be sure and every man a liar. And he is perfect and his ways are perfect. And whatever he has decreed in due time takes place and happens just like he said he would. So abandon religion, please, and come to the gospel, the grace of God. Because here you find out in Romans 3, 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The redemption that is in Christ Jesus is not in the baptistry, in the water, in you getting baptized and follow Jesus into the kingdom. That's impossible. Or you're trying to imitate Jesus. I mean, I remember the book written by uh, this cardinal, the Imitation of Christ. That's really blasphemy. Nobody can imitate Christ because just so happened that Christ was true man, sinless, he never knew sin. He was born and conceived by the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost, through the Virgin fulfilling prophecy, but he was also God in the flesh. And you and I are not that. Exactly. So saying very pious Phrases like, I follow Jesus, I love Jesus, means absolutely nothing. Don't find yourself in that situation where you think that you are with Jesus and Jesus loves you bits, when in reality you are not even saved. You know, nowadays, <clears throat> some people have this idolatry towards personalities, you know, celebrities. I can fill my room with the picture, the posters of, of an actress that maybe I adore. <laughs> Just because I, don't, I couldn't care less, but imagine. And I have all the records and all the tapes and all the photos and it's become so much part of me, you know, whatever it is, the singer so and so. And one day it just happened to have a concert in town, so I go there. I run towards her and I can't even go near. The security would just push me back and I scream, I love you, I love you, I love you. <clears throat> she must smile back because it's part of business and way back if she hears me. But that's it. I have nothing to do. I really thought that she loved me like I love her. No. You need to be in Christ and Christ in you. And this happens only and exclusively when you believe and receive the gospel and the grace of God. Because then you receive justification freely. You don't do anything to be justified. Christ was delivered for our offenses 
that was written again for our justification. This is not written in the four Gospels. This is not written in the letters of Peter or James and John or in the book of Revelation or in the book of Hebrews. This is the message. Our gospel is the gospel of the grace of God and we are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now to Him the works is the reward, not reckon of grace, but of death. Therefore it says of faith that it might be by grace. You understand? In Romans 5.2 Therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And grace means gift and is a free gift. So I could say without fear that we are in the dispensation of the gift. We are in the dispensation of the gift of God, the greatest gift ever, the free gift of eternal life, because Christ has been given to us. He gave himself, Galatians 1, 4, how the Christ gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. It's not we giving our life to Jesus. He has no use of that. After you're saved and sealed, you really can serve him. And you can be an ambassador for Christ, a minister of reconciliation, preaching this gospel of grace, so others can be saved. But know as the offense also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace. You see, the gift. The gift, gift, the gift by gift. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more than which it receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. Grace, righteous, grace, righteous. No strings attached. Be very careful because also among people that cause grace preachers, and I have a website, thegracepreachers.com, that's mine. There are some people that mix works with grace, and that's no more grace. Grace is purely grace. There are no works. God doesn't want anything from you. You can't give him anything. He wants to give you the free gift of eternal life, thanks to the fact that Christ died for your sins. So now I will go to this gospel and a close for today. Okay, First Corinthians 15. This is the gospel that you and I are required to believe, to be saved and to receive the seal of the Holy Ghost. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which those who have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, not what Peter preached unto you, not what Jesus preached in the four Gospels. You understand this? Not because Paul is full of, because Christ sent Paul with this message. So practically, it's not the Gospel of Paul, this is the Gospel of Christ, and Paul is preaching it. Peter is not preaching it. James is not preaching it. John is not preaching it. The four Gospels are not preaching it. So please, please understand this is very, very important. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. So it is possible to believe in vain? Yeah, well, it's written here. And you don't want to believe in vain. Oh, I believe in Jesus. Oh, I've been in church. has been a tremendous service. The presence of the Spirit of God in this it's all imagination. God doesn't work that way. No, He doesn't. 
Oh, I love Jesus. So oh, bless Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Here in the name of Jesus, this in the name of Jesus. That be very careful. It's not a toy to play. You know, I remember when I was in religion myself for 40 years. I would apply the blood of Jesus on everything, and that's really blasphemy to the point of no return. Thank God for the forgiveness of, of all sins that comes with this gospel. Otherwise, I would be absolutely, totally hopeless and desperate. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received. See how clear is that? How the Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So this put an end to all this religiosity. Know what you done or you didn't do. Great missionaries went all over the world preaching the gospel of the kingdom, establishing churches in the dispensation of the grace of God. That's pure madness. This is the great trick of Satan who has deceived mankind and keeps people blind to the glorious gospel of Christ's grace. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how the Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures and that he was buried and they rose again the third day according to the scriptures this is when you believe that's it have you believed this say but why don't you talk about something else? i can talk about anything in the bible from genesis to revelation because every word in the king james bible the pure words of God and the words of God are very pure and they're a great shield to those who seek refuge. It's a buckler, you know, and those that trust in him. No problem about that. But what I need to preach as an ambassador for Christ is this glorious gospel. Because this is the gospel that saves you. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how the Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. So, you cannot die for your sins. When Paul said, I die daily, he is saying that daily is reckoning himself to be dead with Christ. It's not a question that by not doing certain things and doing others, he died to himself. You understand? For I deliver unto first of all that which I received of the Christ, that for our sins, according to the scripture, and it was buried. He rose again that day according to the scriptures. In the book of Romans, go there, chapter 4, in verse 25, Christ was delivered for our offenses, you see? He was raised again for our justification. <clears throat> this is not John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whatsoever believed on him should not perish <coughs> by everlasting life. This is the death, by resurrection of Christ. Here you have Christ crucified, meaning that's the gospel of the cross. And people don't like it because the, the cross tells you, you are a sinner. You got no hope. You're in a dire stress condition, but you need to believe it. And then receive it. So God, saves you and seals you with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 You whom he also trusted the Ephesians in this case the letters of poesy after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also, after you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So, in this case, you don't say, Oh, Lord, now give me the Holy Ghost. So you stay there, tarry, tarry, like in Jerusalem, waiting for the Holy Ghost to come over you, and you go through some kind of experience. I've been doing these kind of things in a religion, unfortunately, in my ignorance of the Scriptures. It's like Paul, he said, I did it ignorantly, in unbelief, but I received mercy. Praise the Lord. In fact, God is merciful and gracious. Doesn't matter all oh, the things bad you've done. Christ paid for everything. You must trust that you heard the word of, the, of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, 
which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the perishable possession unto the praise of his glory. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the perishable possession unto the praise of his glory. You get that? The sealing of the Holy Spirit is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption, until the catching up of the body of Christ. I pray that today you simply believe and receive this gospel and get saved and sealed to the glory of God and for the eternal salvation of your soul. Grace and peace to all. Thank you for listening.